Finally, we have made our way to the Great Palace, and this palace is huge, it's, it's gigantic. There are so many different routes, so many different dead ends, and there is a whole peripheral of new enemies. The first one being this little firebird here. It'll shoot fire out of its mouth, and some of the flames will crawl across the ground and even try to hit you. Just get inside of its flames and slash away with your sword. On this screen, right there, that little jump I made, be sure you do it right past the little statue that's on the lower floor. There's a hole in the ground, and if you just walk right across, you'll fall down. I head down the elevator, and now I'm heading east. And in this new next room, it's completely empty. There are no enemies at all, so just continue along to the east. I suppose they just included this to make this palace seem even grander, because it's just, it's huge. There are so many different screens. Continue along to the east, and you'll find another one of those fire-throwing enemies. And they're actually known as F Fokuru. That's the proper name. And they're another one of those enemies that doesn't have a proper American name. Uh, a feminized name would be a Fotail. Some people refer to it as that. Uh, go to the elevator and head down. And now continue along to the east, and you'll notice there's a couple of these dragon heads. And they're a little different than before. Now they're in orange color as opposed to their normal blue color. <laughs> just continue along. <laughs> they're, there's not much different about them. Just they take two two hits with the down thrust or three hits um, even with the level eight sword. So just make your way through these blocks here and just continue along to the east. You can actually kill these dragon heads, but some of them, they'll respawn over time, pretty much. So, um, you can just, just run across through here. I actually find these things to be incredibly annoying at this point. I mean, there's... It's not really difficult, it's just random time con consumption. Anyway, continue along to the east. And here is another new enemy known as a Foka. These things, they come in a, a red and a blue formation, and they're some of the most difficult enemies in the entire game, and in my opinion, the most difficult. They jump around, hop around, and they're hard to defeat. They really are. Um, head down the elevator, and there's a secret path to the left here. You can use your jump spell, and uh, there's a Foka statue here. Much like the Iron Knuckle statues, some of these will give out a red jar, some of them will bring out a Foka. If it brings out a Foka, you better run away, because those things could be, they're really deadly, they're really hard to defeat, especially the blue variations, which we will fight shortly. Continue down the elevator, and you'll come to like, the fork, you can go left or right, we want to head to the right, and there's another one of these folk, uh, Fokeru, just like as you can see, some of the flames are just moving across, uh, they could be rather difficult, so, you know, just slash at it, you could just avoid it, and just continue to the east. Here's another new enemy, or sort of a new enemy. It's a rope, but this one is a fire-breathing rope, the red rope. And you, you you can't block them, so you gotta jump over the flames, just use your downward thrust on the rope, and continue along to the east. You could use the, the jump spell, there's another one of those statues, but again, I got lucky there because that was a red statue, uh, that was a red potion, as opposed to a, that could have just as easily been a Foka. Or a Fokeru, sorry. Head down the elevator, and now continue to the east, and you'll notice there's a bunch of these bots. These bots are not the same bots we've fought before. They're much stronger, if you can think about that, and they actually give you 10 experience points instead of, I believe it was 2. And here is what I think the most difficult enemy in the entire game, the blue Foka. Use your shield spell, and this is just the mono e mono straight out battle with these things. There, I, I personally can't find a great strategy. I know jumping and using the downward thrust is not very effective because once you get close to him, he'll try to jump over you. The closer you are into him, especially after he jumps, hitting him with the sword can be effective, but it's it's rather difficult and he's 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 pretty ruthless. Like even the blue iron knuckles, when you fight them, sometimes they'll there's like there's times where they won't be shooting their sword. This one is just, like I said, he's completely ruthless, just continuously shooting its sword. And, and you sort of have to defeat it because that thing will follow you. So while you're trying to break these blocks, it'll follow you. So 
you gotta defeat it. Continue along to the east and there's a few more, uh, there was another red rope, shouldn't be much of a problem, and now head down the elevator. Here it looks like it's a boss, but nope, it's another new enemy, and it's a basically a giant bubble, or sometimes referred to as king bubble. Use your downward thrust, and uh, some of them will they'll actually separate into, I don't know what happened with that one, but they'll actually separate into smaller bubbles. Just continue along to the east, and we'll run into another area with yet another one of these uh, these blue foca. This one you do not need to kill. This one you could avoid it. There's a giant bubble on the other side, but it's will it's worth taking the hit from the bubble. And as you can see, that foca is running right after me, and it's coming like it's right up to the elevator here. So uh, continue down the these. Uh, elevators here and this area is actually relieving for once you can head to the east and look what we got here a fairy be careful don't use the downward thrust too many times otherwise you'll break the block and fall into the lava and it sort of defeats the purpose of trying to get a fairy um, break the blocks create like a little staircase and head to the east to the west sorry there's these bots here with lava be patient here if these bots hit you once you're more than likely gonna fall into the lava so just let them fall, kill themselves by falling into lava and continue along to the west. And here we have a Link Doll, the final Link Doll in the game. Uh, that's actually in the, as part of the game. Other than you can always get them once you hit 9000 experience points. Continue back to the elevator and again be patient with these bots. It's not worth trying to lose your life to kill these things. And get back to the elevator and head down. And from here, we want to actually head left. And there's a few more bots, and there's another one of those Fokuru. And uh, like, at first, when you first fight these guys, they they just seem intimidating because they're brand new enemies. But they're really not that bad. So uh, just be patient. You don't want to take too many hits with them. Over here, you want to use the downward thrust. There's a secret hole in the ground here, and you can fall through to a lower floor. From here we want to head to the east and there's another new enemy, this time in the form of a bot master or a giant bot. Once you hit it, it'll separate into numerous smaller bots and these ones take a lot of hits to defeat actually. And it's one of those power and numbers type deals. Well, they're simple enemies but because they're so, there's so many of them, it's hard to just kill them all at once. There's a few Mew on, on the bridge here and there was a hole in the ground. And that's actually where we need to go next. The path I'm taking is completely optional and it's kind of stupid. I don't really know why I decided to go this way. The only reward at the end is a fairy. However, because you're going through this scene where it has these red bago bagos that shoot fire and rather than rocks so you can't block them, you're probably gonna, while well, you can get the fairy at the end of this path here, you're probably gonna lose more health on your way back than you gained from getting the fairy. I suppose the only upside to this is that, well, if you're really good at avoiding the Bago Bagos, then you can gain health. Other than that, you can kill these bubbles if you're right on the edge of upgrading. If you're close to the final upgrade, if, you, if you're not at level 888, or if you're close to 9,000 points. But uh, like I said, these are this is another one of the new enemies in the Great Palace. And this is in the form of a red Bagu Bagu, and they'll shoot fire at you. You can't block them. It's, I mean, and they come from both sides. These guys are, it just goes with the theme of the Great Palace. They're pretty ruthless. So eventually head back to the west. We can break the ground, and we want to drop down below. And this is it. We are at the final, or one of the final bosses, in the form of Thunderbird. If you head to the left here, there's a, that block right there is a hidden block. And if you hit it, sometimes it'll be a Foca, sometimes it will be a Red Jar. And it is absolutely imperative that you have full magic going into this battle. So if it's a Foca, you can head to the right, come back, and this time I got the Magic Jar. And I'm not going to restore my health because I can't. I need full magic because I need to use the Thunder Spell. Join me for the final section of the walkthrough where we will take on Thunderbird and the final boss, Darkling.